girl, we saw that one being a mess. And this one gave me a lot of those same vibes, which was a disaster. What kind of child movie is this? Hello, my beautiful life rights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crayon in the box. Girl, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of Drag Race France Season 3, Episode 5, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had the fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is the big bad look, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a sort of like villain-esque character. A little bit spooky, a little bit scary. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Leona Winter, and Leona is coming out in this like red and yellow bodysuit with this giant head. She is channeling her inner Game of Thrones because why? Leona Winter is coming. She is channeling the Targaryen dynasty. But let's get into this look. The bodysuit is this sort of like corseted material with these big hips in this like red and gold textures. The dragon head is actually made up of hair. That is right, it's got hair and it's got a bunch of rhinestones on it. Where that dragon head comes off and then you see her blonde wig channeling that Targaryen trademark. When this came out, I will say, first off, the dragon head definitely makes an impact. It definitely makes a statement and it makes you go, oh, wow. But once you get over this giant dragon head, it kind of falls a little bit apart for me. I know, hold up and listen. I think that the bodysuit is fine, it's nothing special, but we've seen so many flame bodysuits done on Drag Race. I think of like someone like John Burst Blonde, who did it on UK vs. The World 2. I think of Jan Sport, who did it on All Stars. We've just seen this done, and we've seen it done better. Then we get into the boots, and the boots are beige. They like blend into our skin tones. I'm like, if you're gonna do this armor fire theme, why not bring it into the boots? I mean, you're still wearing them. They just don't feel like they match to the rest of the body. And then the dragon head, super cool, best part of the outfit, but did it really need to be made out of hair? Probably not because it's not on her head, it's like still on top and it still feels like a helmet more than it feels like her hair, but it looks amazing so it kind of did its job. I didn't necessarily understand dragon when I first saw it, I understood maybe more dinosaur because if it was a dragon I was expecting some wings in some places, I think that would have really Put it up a notch. All those critiques being said, it is not a bad outfit. I'm being hypercritical because, girl, I'm a YouTuber. That's what I'm here for. All in all, this is actually not bad and definitely gonna be a bad. Next up, it's Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out with this a black a spiky jacket, with this black spiky hair, these white spiky boots, and these button eyes. She said that she is channeling the other mother from Coraline. Now, personally, I've never actually seen Coraline. Coraline was one of those movies that came out when I was a child, and it looked really scary, so I never got around to do it. And as an adult, it's not one that I necessarily went back to. So I actually had to like Google some stuff while trying to find stuff for this video and I saw the reference photo. Honestly, I don't think you even need to see the reference photo to understand that this is an amazing outfit. I love the fashion interpretation of this jacket. It feels modern, it feels cool, it gives a little bit of that Matrix vibe, but it also gives you a little bit of that prehistoric vibe. The hair and the jacket both have like the same silhouettes and really spike up each other and really accentuate this character. Even if you don't know the character like me, you think it's a cool outfit. As she turns around, you also see that the back is also got like bones and Spikes coming out of it, and I'm like, what kind of child movie is this? Well, obviously a Tim Burton one. Who else would come up with crazy shit like this? Looking at Lulu Skaga's runway makes me think maybe I need to go back and watch this movie. All in all, this is amazing and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Misty Phoenix, and Misty Phoenix is coming out wearing this sort of green uh, bustier with uh, green arms and black gloves. She's got green material flowing all over her. Her hair is made of snakes, and she's holding a cement severed head. 
That is right, if you didn't guess, she is channeling Medusa. When this came out, it was definitely a moment. Green, especially that army green color, is a hard color to work with because it absorbs so much light. And on the runway, you want things that kind of shimmer. But what she did really smart in this outfit was that there was a sort of like these little gold pieces that accentuate all the shapes on her body to really give you this snatch shape. Even though she is being like this Medusa character, she didn't go full on snake. She did a little bit more of like this armory aspect to it, which I kind of appreciate. Would I have liked more snakes here and there? Yeah, imagine some snakes in the corset. I think that would have really like brought it up a notch. But at the same time, is it really needed? Because you knew who she was immediately. The snake headpiece, super cool, super well done. But the best piece has to be this stone head. And if you look closely, that stone head is of Nikki Doll, the host of Drag Race France. And I was just like, touche, cherry on top. That stone head was giving you both Medusa vibes, but also like Gucci vibes, you know, when they were going to the Met Gala and stuff like that. Very that, it's very fashion, it's very cool, it's very unique. All in all, I think this is really well done and definitely worth a oh. Next up, we have Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is giving us her best interpretation of Nosu Raftu. If you're wondering to yourself, who is Nosu Raftu? Well, girl, I looked it up for you. It is this vampire from this 1920s black and white film. So maybe one of those like original movie vampires. She painted herself in full black and white from head to toe, referencing that the original movie was in fact in black and white. She's giving you this sort of like this dorky vampire, which is kind of reminiscent of how movies were made back in the 20s, then making it more drag and making it more fashion with this coat. It is definitely a character piece and a definitely a play on that. She made this coat more of like a dress coat, she added some lapels, and definitely dragged it up. Even if you didn't know who this character was, you can understand that it is some like weird Dracula thing, and that's kind of the important part, because not everybody's gonna understand your references, so uh, if you're gonna reference something that people don't understand, it's gotta be a good enough outfit even without the reference, and this is. Is it my favorite overall? No. I do feel like she could have pushed it further. That being said, I'm not quite sure how, because this is not the character I would have went with, and it's not a character I know much about, so it's hard for me to like really critique it more than is it good or is it bad. So I'm gonna go with it's good, and therefore get a oh. Next up, it's Norma Belle, and Norma Belle is coming out wearing this white ripped up dress with this headpiece and these big black feathers. She goes on to explain that she is Grand Mercal. Grand Mercal is a sort of myth legend in La Réunion where she's from. That is this woman that used to be a slave and now sort of like haunts the island. That's like the short version. It's probably much longer with a lot more deeper history. The one thing that I like with, with uh, Noha Bell is that she keeps channeling her culture, her country. So it gives you a little bit of knowledge into something that I wouldn't know anything about. Honestly, before watching Drag Race I barely even knew where La Réunion was. So she is teaching me so, so much. And this is something I know nothing about. When you come out with this sort of like lore and mythical creatures, I'm totally into it. But the question is, how do you make this drag? And then she comes out with this outfit and I'm like, Really? This character does not exist. Even when I Googled it to try to find pictures for this video, I couldn't find anything. So you could pretty much make up what you want her to look like. You can make her as glamorous or haunted as you want. I felt like she's got stuck on the slave thing and tried to play that up, which I understand, but I wish she would have had more fun with it. At the end of the day, this is drag, and this is drag at an international stage. When she first came out and I didn't know what she was talking about, my initial thoughts went to Tia Coffee's pterodactyl, and girl, we saw that one being a mess, and this one gave me a lot of those same vibes. If she wanted to move away from that, I think that she should have just like done the 2.0 version of the pterodactyl that uh, Tia Coffee did. In a sense, really zhuzhed it up. Like if you want to go with this matted material, that's cool, but but how about have a bodysuit underneath? How about every rip, every flame be made out of like a crystals to really like elevate it? These wings are really heavy and don't match the body. I wish it was a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more put together. All in all, thank you for the history lesson, but I didn't get this look, I didn't like this look, and it's definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> 
next up is Le Philippe. And Le Philippe is coming out with these white suit with these sort of hand-drawn detailing on it. She's got her big red hat and her red skirt. As she lifts her hat, you realize she has an eye patch and she is L Driver from Tarantino's movie Kill Bill. Now we love a pop culture moment and I think it's really fun to go in this direction. When you think of Kill Bill, everybody usually thinks of Uma Thurman's character with the yellow. We rarely see this character done. Also, with a theme that is all about monsters and villains, most people are gonna end up in the darker colors. And so to see someone come out with white and red is really striking on the runway. Then the hair that she has paired with it is really over the top and perfectly coiffed. She decided to make the bottom more of a dress to make it a little bit more drag. And this is what I'm talking about. You take the inspiration and you make it your own. We do not want a recreation, we want a drag interpretation and a drag interpretation interpretation is what Le Philippe did here. All in all, I think this is a very smart and very well done and therefore gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Perseo, and Perseo is coming out with this giant headdress made of snakes with this little black skirt, and she is also doing Medusa. Now, I will say that in the past weeks, I was complaining about how Perseo always does the same style of drag, and I wanted to switch it up. But after the last Celine Dion runway, which was a disaster, if you want to hear my opinion on that, go watch my previous episode. I am glad that she's going back to her, her roots and back to her original style of drag. This headpiece is everything. This really makes the snakes the, such a focal moment and really makes you understand who this is immediately. Of course, she's not wearing many clothes, but that's what Perseo does. Perseo does rip off the, the skirt and then gives you a lot more body, adi, adi. I wish she would have kept the skirt on. I think that that's how Perseo can keep Perseo's personality, but make it a little bit different each week. I think Perseo is just so used to being so naked all the time that you really just don't have that many pieces to judge. You have a headpiece, you have like maybe a little bikini and that's it. I preferred it when the skirt was on and I wish that the skirt had maybe a little snake detailing in it. I think that would have just made it feel a little bit more unique and a little bit different because if you look at all of Perseo's looks side by side, sometimes you're like, eh, they're kind of similar. I'm not saying that she needs to change her drag. She does this drag well. I just wish that she would have maybe added a couple of pieces per runway. In this case, a skirt, maybe the next one is some weird gloves or something like that. You know what I mean? Now, the thing about Medusa is that this would have been a fine choice had we not had someone else to compare it to. And when the two people do the same character, you inevitably compare them to each other. I think that Perseo definitely had the better headpiece out of the two looks, but Missy Phoenix had the better everything else. With that said, is this a bad look? And my answer is no. Is it the best look? Also, no. So it's gonna end up being a soft bow. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? I find this theme so interesting because we saw a version of this theme done on Holland season two, and they definitely went a lot more creature and scary base. While on Drag Race France, they definitely went a little bit more fashion, which just goes to show the differences within seasons. And I like both interpretations, to be honest. And I think overall, this is a great theme that I'd love to see done again on another franchise because ultimately this is totally my vibe. A little bit creepy, a little bit cosplay, a little bit referential, and I'll a whole lot of fabulousness. Talking about fabulousness, who had my fabs and drabs of the week? Well, my drab of the week uh, this week goes to no, Bell. Honestly, this was just a mess altogether. And honestly, it's a little bit confusing because No, Bell was doing pretty good. She was turning out stuff that I was shocked she was gonna turn out stuff with. And then she kind of ended with this one. So I was just like, oh girl, this was not your week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week, I'm gonna give it to I love this look. The fact that I didn't even watch Coraline and still love this look goes to show you how strong this look is. I think it gave such a vibe, such an element, such a fashion moment, and one that I think people will remember. All in all, it was amazing. Okay, y'all, what did you think of this episode? Do you agree or disagree with my comments? Who do you think had the fab or drab of the week? Let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I really need your help to get more subscribers. Girl, on that note, once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.